Is the Model D- minus an A+, plus or an F? Let's talk about that. Roll the intro. Oh, we don't. Short circuit. Short circuit. Let's unbox tech. Let's unbox tech. OK, let's unbox it. For those in the know, Glorious PC Gaming Race is a fairly new company. And they uh, started making desk pads and mouse pads, moved to keyboards, and now they're making mice. They've had good success making wired, really light mice. They have the Model O, the Model D. Uh, the distinction, the Model O is ambidextrous. The Model D is a right-handed mouse. This is the D minus, so that's right-handed, smaller, and uh, I'm very excited. This is a highly anticipated mouse, and what's special is that it's a reasonable price. For the matte version, it's $49.99, and for the glossy version, which I really wouldn't want, I don't want glossy things, it's $59, so $10 more. That's just a good value for a good gaming mouse. It's definitely intended for more of a shooter crowd. There's the six buttons on the mouse. <sighs> That's it. It's 58 grams, I believe. Let me check. So this mouse is 61 grams, and the larger one is a seven grams more at 68. The glossy one's a gram heavier, but like I said, I don't want glossy, so I'm gonna base this off of the matte one. They sent us a black one and a white one, and I will use both of these at, during the course of the review for the different kinds of glide pads that they include, which is pretty exciting. So in the box, there's the mouse. We have some documentation a letter from Shazim Mohammed, the CEO of Glorious. I'm really glad they took out the uh, master race out of PC Glorious Gaming Race for obvious reasons. You know, it includes a lot of stickers, which is pretty cool. Here's the bigger glide pads I was mentioning. I'm gonna take those out, save them, because we're gonna try both. Ooh, it's like Zeus kind of dude holding a mouse. A little about GPC GR. More stuff. I love stuff. I hate when you open a box and it's just like the thing. So this is a little quick start guide. Very cool, it shows you all the different RGB modes, which we will see later. I'll have a little dance party, but I don't wanna read that. I would way rather have someone read this stuff to me, just like our sponsor Audible does. With Audible, you can listen to your favorite free audiobooks wherever you are with the free Audible app. Choose any audiobook to get started. Also, your first audiobook is free. Members also get one audiobook every month, plus an extra editor's extra listen as well. Enjoy thousands of audiobooks, podcasts, guided wellness programs, and more with no credits needed. Start your 30-day free trial through the link below. By the power of time travel, I'm gonna unbox the other one so we can compare. Speaking of time travel, our um, most recent episode of Carpool Critics, actually one episode ago, we talked about Tenant, which is a movie that may or may not have time traversal elements. Let's go Oh yeah, I'm not gonna go any further because it's probably all the same stuff. White and black. As you can see, it comes default with uh, these glide pads that are patented to Glorious. They're very smooth, I've heard good things about them. But what I really like is that they actually include extra glide. This is kind of sweet because the benefit of wired mice is that they can be extremely light. They don't have to have wireless transmitters or batteries, and so generally a good light corded mouse will be super light. This is 60, whereas like a G Pro, which is maybe the best, is 80, or like a Viper Ultimate, it's like 74. If you're dragging that around, sure, the mouse is light, but you're also dragging a cord around, and so that starts to add to the weight. This helps by making the actual mouse itself glide smoother, which kind of helps enhance the illusion of lightness. Pretty easy, you take off the 3M backing. Man, this is the stuff I'm so bad at. As you can see, the blue does come off, so that's fine. I think it's meant to protect it, keep it as smooth as possible. Because it's one, once it's on your mouse pad, there's not really that many chances for dinks or like damages that would make it less smooth. Let's talk about the physical of the mouse. I'm gonna choose the white one because it's probably a little easier to see. It's a good little mouse. It's kind of like a 403 or a basilisk shape. It's a right-handed mouse, so it curves so that your hand can kind of fit a little more comfortably. And that's actually what I prefer. I use a 403 at home. The G Pro is a better mouse, but the shape of the 403 I prefer. It's got the six buttons, so left, right, mouse click, uh, back, forward. 
It has the middle button, which I believe is a DPI indicator by default, but you can probably reset it in the software. And then a little DPI indicator on the bottom. I've heard a lot of people complain that the DPI indicator is on the bottom for people who kind of switch sensitivities for sniping on the fly, because you're not gonna take your eyes off the screen. But uh, overall, I like the look of it. I mean, I like honeycomb shaped mice. They're kind of a pain to clean, but it's a good looking overall mouse. I'm not a huge fan of putting the the PC, the GPCGR mascot on the mouse, but it's, it's pretty understated, so that's totally okay. There's little grooves in the mouse that help your fingers sit really well, which I actually find very comfortable. It does feel like the curvature on the back goes down a little bit, so it feels like I kind of want a little more presence in my palm. Um, which the Model D does provide. Overall, it's a comfy shape. It definitely feels like it's a palm down, just clawing the mouse a little bit shape, but really mice are so much preference. Really, once you break down the inside of the mouse, there's not that much differences anymore. The differences come down to the Pixar 3360 sensor, which is considered a flawless sensor. It's a little less granular than the 3389, uh, in that it can only do increments of 100 DPI for settings, but it goes up to 12,000, which is much higher than I hope you use. Man, did any of you actually use 12,000 DPI? If you do, please let me know. That's a uh, psycho. I use 800, like a normal person, I guess. What's well, normal, who cares? But otherwise, it's a flawless sensor. It's light, it feels good. The button switches are the Omron D2FC F7N 20M0Fs. I wrote that down, I obviously didn't memorize that. D2FC means it's a Chinese switch. The F means that it's the lighter actuation force. So if it's the Chinese ones, it's the 60 gram. If it's the Japanese one, it's the 75 versus kind of 120 or 150. The 20 mil obviously means it's rated for 20 mil and the zero F means they give zero f about what you think. So as per usual, I'm gonna load up Rainbow Six. While that's loading up, I'm gonna load up the Model D software. So there, there's a lot of options. You can change what each button does. You can add macros, which I will not do. Uh, you can change the DPI settings. Yes, that's what I want. So you can change the settings. You can go more granular if you want. It's of uh, increments of 100, which is totally fine. There's all the different lighting modes. I don't know if they can do it on both at the same time. Right now we're on glorious mode, which is glorious. Seamless breathing. So it's kind of just like a flashing through the colors. Just straight breathing on one color. Uh, tail. Grave. Ooh. Yeah, that's fun. Wave. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And then off. Okay, it seems like it's control. Uh, it's the same DPI for both, which is great because I wanted to compare same mouse, different glide pads, see how that goes. And then we're going to compare it to different mice and see how that goes. Oh yeah, this feels this feels pretty good. I'm actually impressed. Uh, with the cable managed, I've taped it to the front so I get just the right amount of slack. It just, it's really light. It feels like I'm flying, especially with these extra glide pads. Let's switch to the non-glide pads, see if it's quite as smooth. Oh God. Uh, it's not that different. like. As soon as I'm like not doing anything, it doesn't feel that different. It's a little less smooth, but if you, for some reason, didn't have the glide pads, you're fine. I'd say like, it's not worth like going out of your way to um, get them. But yeah, I actually really like the shape of this mouse. I'm kind of digging it. Oh, maybe I, maybe I will go back to wired mice. This feels good. It feels fast. I can like flick. I mean, I'm not as accurate because it's not what I'm used to. And this is a different setup but this mouse feels really good. I'm kind of surprised. I don't usually like wired mice. Usually I find the cable gets in the way or I'm just like, eh. But this shape feels good. The buttons feel good. I, I, I do like honeycomb mice. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, this is better than I expected. All right, now we're gonna play some Left 4 Dead 2. It's one of my favorite games of all time and I just wanna showcase it, remind you how great it is. Great, my teammates are awesome. This is great. I put it on easy so that I didn't have to work very hard. Oh. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh buddy, here we go. Get out of here, donkey. Oh gosh. Oh, that was so easy. I'm so glad you guys could join me for the death of Shrek. Everybody press F in the chat. Oh, he's, <laughs> they didn't make his face mean at all. I feel kind of bad now. So I want to compare it to some other top end mice that are much more expensive and see how it's compares. All right, so the first comparison I'm gonna do is to the Viper Ultimate. It's the best wireless mouse that Razer makes. It's super light, 74 grams. This mouse has gotten very good reviews. I like the shape of it, it feels comfortable. More comfortable than the G Pro to me. It's an ambidextrous mouse, but the way it curves out, I actually really enjoy. So let's see how it does. I like the feel of the matte plastic 
so far on the Model D minus, definitely better. This one feels a little cheaper. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Yeah, I, there's like a really textured rubber kind of feel on the side, and I think that it wouldn't bother me, but after coming off of, like I was holding a 403 and then the Model D minus, it just doesn't feel as like refined. Also, these side buttons are like really small. That's a 403, and that's what I'm used to, and so going from this to this, that's fine, but this to this, that feels like I'm gonna miss some button clicks. Ooh, I'll use that recoil, I guess. I'll blame the recoil. Actually, I'll blame the mouse. I thought I would like this mouse more. I've used it a couple times and I've liked it, but now that I'm actually looking at it with a critical eye, not a huge fan of the Viper Ultimate. All right, next we're gonna do the G Pro Wireless. It's the gold standard. It's, I think, what every wireless mice wishes it could be. Uh, I use it at my desk. It's great, it's pretty expensive. I think it's like, what, 199, 159, 149 US. But first, I'm gonna play a little more with the D minus, just to have a comparison. The, the D minus feels not cheap for how good of a price it is. I'm impressed, the plastics feel good, the shape is, is good, it's ergonomic, it's comfy. The glide pads are awesome. Cable's light, it's a parachute cord. But let's go to the G Pro and see how that feels. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good mouse. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real nice mouse. I don't love the shape. I, I find it doesn't feel comfortable in my hand after like long periods, but it's really good plastic. It's really light. It's uh, everything I could hope for in a mouse. Buttons always feel good. I mean, wireless mice, we've done a video on if wireless mice are as good as wired mice, and yes, it is. Feels great. G Pro's gold standard, remains gold standard, but at like triple the price, eh? Next up is the 403. This is the wired 403. I use the wireless one, but it's my homeboy. It feels very comfortable in my hand. It feels a lot heavier than uh, I remember after handling all these super light mice. I do like the way that the palm comes a little bit higher. The plastic does feel very good. I've heard stories of it kind of wearing off. Like I know Edsel has has one and he gave it to his girlfriend because all the plastic kind of started rubbing off. But again, this is a pretty gold standard mouse. Logitech makes very high end products for a decent price. I do like the cable on the Model O actually better. It feels lighter, like it would snag less. On the 403, it's a little more textured and hard uh, and it would give me resistance. I feel like if the stars uh, line poorly and this caught on something, this would give me a lot more trouble than the Model D minus. So if you're going wired, I'd actually recommend this or the D over it. Should you get a Model D minus? If you like the shape uh, and you like honeycomb mice, if you're into wired mice, absolutely. This is an awesome mouse. I'm actually gonna take it home and uh, take it for a longer spin. I'm super excited to play with this more. The, the glide pads make it so smooth. It feels so light. It's a great shape. The buttons feel good. Overall, this is an excellent mouse, but mice are so much preference. So let me know in the comments, is this the kind of mouse you like? Do you like ambidextrous mice? Do you like big mice? Do you like heavy mice? Are you one of those people that puts extra weights in their mouse? I mean, I used to do it with my G9X. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna watch more Short Circuit, there's plenty, but you can watch me in the previous video what, review the f mouse with a fan in it uh, and get my thoughts or check me out on Carpool Critics where I talk about movies with James and Riley and have a hella good time. <laughs>